Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of It's, it's About, About Time. Time. Well, we're on episode, I think, 79 by now. That sounds right. And today, we're in LBI, New Jersey, celebrating the 4th of Dubai weekend special. Unfortunately, our colleague Jared has left early, so he will not be in this episode, but he will be in next episode with a special surprise for you. But getting back to this episode, this was our weekend getaway, our weekend fix. And in all the episodes we've done so far, we really haven't got to give you an episode on how to fix a watch. We've done adjustments, we've done sizing, we've done band structure, we've done face size, we've done everything that we can regarding watches, but we really haven't done an episode on how to fix it. And the reason why is because neither Dave, nor me, nor Jared are professionals and how to fix the watch. That's why we use both Sergio and Matt. And neither of them have you been introduced to yet on this series, until now. I went to Matt a couple weeks ago, and he took one of, uh, one of our lady Rolexes, and our family's lady Rolexes, and it had to be fixed. And I wanted to show you a little bit of what he went through to try to fix this Rolex. And all he was attempting to do was to change the dial and to basically fix the watch to clean it up and to get it working again. And as you can see from this video, he had a fun time doing it. So hopefully this will go as a learning experience on what's it like to fix a watch in general, especially a Rolex. Enjoy, we'll be right back. Well, actually, I'm actually going to watch you put this back together. Maybe for my web thing. Putting together a 1969 women's Rolex. Walk me through the steps, Matt. What's that? Through the steps on how you do this shit. Undo the back first. Well, that's always important. Yeah. First, make sure it's a Rolex. Look for the serial numbers on each side and write them down. Serial number and case number. And that's what, the inside of the Rolex right now? Yes, yeah. The date wheel? Date wheel looks right off. You don't have to remove it with the dialogue. Okay, let's see. Go through the procedures. You gotta take the movement out of the case. So you gotta loosen the stem first. There's a screw in the back opposite the stem on the plate, like over here. You gotta loosen that to get the stem out. And that's a cap dial, so that goes right over it. Yeah. Right there's the liner part. And the dates are from beneath it. The yellow wheel is from two-tone case. That's the other difference now. Mm -hmm. If you get a beat-up watch with a white date wheel, that means it was a stainless steel face of the watch. Interesting. The Rolex has to have an exchange in order to do it for you. You just can't get the piece you want. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Where's the dial to go? Let me see for me. It's on your own. Hey. Alright. That'll work. Yeah, those dials you can find on eBay. There's a lot of them now. Yeah. 
get flooded. Anywhere between 85 and 120 bucks. Everybody bugs. and their brothers go into uh, conversions. Is that one of the biggest things in the Rolex market, is conversions? No. Knockoffs are. <laughs> There's so many knockoffs out there that are really good. And it's very hard to keep a Rolex 100% original because as soon as you put diamonds on it, it's not 100% original anymore. Most Rolex does. Let's stay with the Rolex. And Rolex do a very limited amount of that. Very, they never did it much at all, actually. A couple of watches a year. I told you, I had that one sixty-five thousand dollar one in here. That Rolex put the price on it. Diamonds everywhere. They made three watches that year, where they made them on this part here, on a man's watch, on the sides, right. the wings, the arms. It looks like something a black guy would have on California, but they use bright wings now. How many screws do you have to tighten to get the Rolex back into where it's supposed to be? Two. Especially at, on the older models, right? At 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. You, you tighten them down to make the case loose, the movement loose. You make them come up to make it tight when you put it back together. It kind of works. I'm cheating on these screws because I don't trust you on Special type of watch grease? Just a waterproof shoe. It helps. So 69's... I'm assuming her... She, she's not going to be able to touch this watch, is she? She's not, no. She's not going to take it underwater or anything. Well, I'm talking about the lock and stem. If she's not going to be... You're not going to tell her how to do it, are you? Hell no. I'm just going to have her set the... We'll yeah. set it and... She's so, going to, probably only going to wear it for... The other one's going to check the accuracy. Yeah, watches like this, she's probably going to wear for nice occasions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This watch needs to be run. And when you go to put this watch on, if you let it sit a while, wind it about 15 times before you let them take it away. Okay. And set the time. And then you set the go with it. You'll probably get away with five. You'll probably get away with just shaking it, depending on how clean it is. Now I'm loosening it up to tighten it up. How's that for an oxymoron? The way the screws go, you see the way the half moon, it's like a circle? Mm -hmm. It goes under the steel rim of the case. So when you put it in, you put it in where the winder is, where the opening is. You slide it around to get to your spot, and then you unscrew it so it comes up, and it locks it in place. It's a good thing. They knew what they were doing. They did. It's funny how Rolex has the tool. They don't what? a specialized tool to for their case backs. Oh yeah, the, the case opener. Right. The uh, Bulgari does the same thing. Brightling. Brightling does the same thing. Brightling was a six hundred bucks for me to buy. I got mine for like hundred and twenty through Esslinger. My friend has a one that's this big. It's just for Rolexes with their name on the outside. Rolex doesn't have one. It's so old. Huh. And Rolex wants it. They offer the rock. I have a friend that works for everybody. Unless you're, a t unless you're a salesman, you don't make a lot of money. Because the cost of the Rolex parts got to be pretty okay. I had a cousin asked me for five rose gold Rolex Speedmasters, Chronographs. The new pink version that just came out about four years ago. Mm -hmm. He wanted five or six of them. It's not that he was fucking with me. That'd be like a quarter of your bucks, probably. Mm -hmm. These were custom watches with diamonds. He wanted the whole thing. He lives in Texas. You know what he does for a living? Oil wells. Wow. Okay, for, so he was serious. He wanted for his engineers, yes. So I said to him, I said, I said, if I could, I don't think anyone would give me six watches up front, and I didn't have the money in the bank account. Hmm. I'm a little low this month. 
Now I guess you gotta be careful with that tool, you don't over tighten it because it could crack. No, you can't, you know why? You hit the tool go click. So as soon as it clicks, that's when you know. There it is, yep. How much do one of those tools cost? This I know. 150, 200 bucks. When I bought it. I don't know what they are now, you can get them. They make different versions, but the other ones suck. How do you tell the good ones from the bad ones? Well, you see this one here? You put a wrench into it and you turn it like this. Right. That's not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put it in a vise. And when these crystals go on, they sit in this plastic ring. That you can see sticking up all the way around. That's a sign that it's not, not right too. One more time. What happened now? The whole thing's spinning. What would cause that to happen? I don't know. It's not tight. There's a little piece I have. I can't find it. I hate these tools. So. As you can clearly see, there's a lot that goes into fixing a watch in general. And basically, as many times as Matt tried that day to swap the dial out and to clean and adjust that watch and make sure he could bring it back to me in perfect working order, it wasn't meant to be. It would actually take him a few more times until he got it to the right specifications that he wanted to. Lesson to be learned. When you take your watch in, especially a Rolex or any other expensive watch, and you take it into a watchmaker, don't expect it back right away, okay? Because what happens is with the fixing process, um, if it's under warranty, they're going to have to, the watchmakers are required to send it back out to Switzerland where they do all the testing and the calibrating out in Switzerland, which takes about two to four weeks. And it takes another two to three weeks to get back to you with the shipping and the customs and everything else like that. That's why they say allow six to eight weeks for delivery. If it's not under warranty, they do one of two things. They try to either fix it in-house, as Matt was doing, or what most of them do is they'll send it out to the actual watch manufacturer within the U.S. They have a, um, a hub somewhere in the central U.S. I know I've done this when I had my long jeans. Uh, I had timing problems with it, and they had a central hub somewhere out in Ohio, and they took uh, the watch and tested it out there for two to three weeks, had recalibrated it, and then sent it back to me. So they do one of two things. Uh, if it's in warranty or out of warranty, depending where their manufacturing facilities are uh, for the you know specific company. Uh, but the one question I always get from people, and it's the most common question, People get with watches or anything else is hey Drew what watch should I get now Dave has asked me this a long time ago when I was just getting to know him and what did I tell you Dave you said that there are a lot of factors to take into consideration when buying a watch such as whether it's uh, quartz or automatic such as your budget um, whether you want a water resistant watch the design and type of the watch so. absolutely and Dave is right on all points. You know, you have to know what you're looking for. It's like me asking you, you know, oh, what kind of car should I get? Oh, geez, what's your budget? What, what do you need it for? It's like anything else. Right. I got to know about 10 other things first, you know, with watches regarding what, um, do you want it ceramic? Do you want it stainless steel? Do you want it gold? Are you looking for diamonds? Are you looking for a dress watch or a beater watch like we talked about last episode with Jared? There are so many factors um, before I can tell you. And once you answer those 10 questions for me, then I can give you a list of five names of watches that you would be interested in. But in the end, it still comes down to your personal preference. I may give you the perfect recommendation and you may not like the look of it. And we all know that the look is the number one thing that people buy watches for to begin with. Functionality is number two. You always look with your eyes first. And so just realize that whether it's picking out a watch, part of it 
is knowing what goes into fixing the watch. And you have to be well aware of that uh, well beforehand. Do your research, is always what I've told Dave. Take a look at what the costs are going to be. Obviously, if you buy a Rolex, it's going to cost you a lot more to fix it and a lot more time to fix it than if you buy a timepiece. Okay, so there's a lot more. Um, do you want it to hold its value? Do you, you know, what's it going to be like in 30 years from now? Are you looking for a watch for a lifetime? Or are you looking for a watch for six months? You just don't know. Are you looking for a watch that has technology like Fitbit? Or are you, or are you looking for a watch like Rolex that you can pass down to your future generation? So, there's a lot of things, again, that have gone into watches that we've done episodes on. But how to fix them is not something we've really touched on as much because neither uh, Jared, me, nor Dave are experts in it. So that's why we wanted you to get a good look at even what watchmakers go through in trying to fix these. Because even they don't get it right on the first time. As good as they are, there's several different factors that go into fixing a watch. And they have to keep retrying and retrying and retrying until all the steps are perfect and they can give it back to you. So again, thank you guys for joining us on this episode. Uh, here at lovely LBI for the 4th of July. Beautiful. And like I said, we'll have a special surprise for the next episode with Jared. And until then, we fare you a happy 4th of July, and we'll see you next time on another episode of It's, it's About, about time. time.